Well, hello, hello, everyone. It has been a uh, pretty hot minute since the last time I've done one of these videos, which is basically the sort of um, car detailing slash washing sort of journals uh, that I've done in the past, but um, haven't done in a while since uh, there were other things to do simply and kept myself busy there. But now I have some time and thought, hey, why not, not just make a video about um, what I've been doing, how things going, what's been on my mind, blah, 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 and all that fun stuff that is all related to um, car detailing. So uh, there have been some changes, of course, given the uh, amount of time I haven't done these sort of journals, right? So obviously there's gonna be quite a lot to talk about probably gonna be all over the place but um, <laughs> uh, we'll get through it so anyways there uh, are some things to talk about when it comes to what kind of stuff I got over the course of the most recent uh, journal quote-unquote I did and now so let's get I guess we just start on the bottom here sorry if the uh, washing machine is uh, getting in the way noise wise but anyway one of the obvious, obvious ones um, is the DIY detail rinse and wash that I got for myself in the gallon bottle, because I'm a, um, a maniac. But this is version two, you can definitely tell by the milky appearance. And I still do have version one right here, so you can definitely tell the difference side by side. Let's I guess do that, because why not? So you can definitely see, um, the real obvious differences, right? You can definitely see how clear this one is, right? Whereas this one has a more milky appearance. So, uh, kind of fascinating of how things change, right? But the capabilities on this one appear to be uh, better, of course. Uh, the, the lubricity or how slick it is is very noticeable in comparison, or pretty noticeable. Um, I would say though, otherwise, if you still have this gallon bottle, use it up and then buy this um, one right here. But I was, I just could not resist the temptation and I just bought myself the gallon, because why not? You know, I had the opportunity, I had the chance, and I did so. Now, I don't know if it's me, but the bottle that it came with, the gallon bottle that um, I got for version two, does not fit these um, proportioners too well. So that's why it is missing that. But instead, what I did, because I'm a bigger maniac in that, in that case, I actually buy myself a 16 ounce bottle right here, of version two, rinse and wash right here. And uh, it's actually pretty nice to have a smaller bottle of the same product, right? Because now you, you can like carry it around with you. And um, I luckily had uh, one lying around when it comes to these proportioners, right? And now I can like just carry it around, not having to worry about the weight of the cart, right? And essentially, um, it's very, very more flexible in that sense. It's just, um, a little more ergonomic in that sense, right? Because it's, well, not heavy. Very easy to handle, all that stuff. But yep, um, funny also because I also bought myself a gallon of uh, Armor Details Hero Vince's Wash. This one is also really good. And uh, I think these two honestly um, come out on top for right now, as of this uh, moment. There may be some thing to surpass these two someday, but it's a very hard competition. I would say very tough competition. Um, what they offer, what they do. Um, if I had to pick one, um, my bias lean more towards DIY detail. Uh, the sort of visual reaction, I guess you could say, if that makes sense, is much more apparent to me with this. This one is like right up, right up there. So I would say you can't go wrong with either one, but if you really wanted to boil it down, right, 
the proportioner fits this gallon bottle, whereas this one doesn't. Uh, at least not well anyway. Uh, when I tried to fit it, it just did not thread it well or did not catch the threads well. So it kept leaking and uh, I, had, I had to um, switch it back to the cap. So, and that's why also I bought this uh, smaller bottle in the first place. So I don't know, either way, you're, you can't go wrong. Um, the Lubrissi on this one is also really good. It's very much up there. They pretty much go neck and neck, right? But I think the, char the cleaning characteristics, characteristics on this one, I do like a little better. I mean, it, it, there was just something about me spraying this on my sister's car, even though it looked clean. Spraying it, and then you just see so much of that that black spots, right? Like all the all that fine dirt, whatever, being encapsulated like that. That was like very telling to me when it came to DIY details, rinses, wash. So I really do like it. Uh, whereas this one, I mean, maybe maybe I should uh, actually put these head to head someday, but. Um, the reason why I kind of put it off is just because these two are so good. It's like, I don't know. There really isn't a point to me anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it at, um, someday just out of boredom. But uh, like I said, don't want to sound like a broken record, but you cannot go wrong with either of these two. They both smell great, perform great. They clean great. Most importantly, you cannot go wrong either way. Um, <laughs> You can kind of see how many of these gallon bottles I'm just being toppled with, right? And that's my own fault, of course, because I made the choice. Um, I have the Nano Skin um, wheel cleaner right here. I've been quite uh, using it quite a bit. I do really like it. it. Cleans really well. It has a very similar formulation with Dark Fury. So if you don't have Dark Fury, go get this. Um, if you don't have it available in your area, that is. Even if you have this instead, you cannot go wrong. I still have also um, this Hyperwash right here, this gallon bottle of Hyperwash from Meguiar's Detailer Professional Choice Series. My old bottle of um, O and R right here. You can kind of see how much I used in the past, but um, this is like almost a year, if not. Uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting pretty close. <laughs> I don't know if you can see closely, but the bottle is like kind of dimpled. And it seems like over time, the water in this has kind of evaporated quite a bit, maybe because of this or something. It doesn't quite seal off um, the bottle. But yeah, a, a lot of, seems like the water has, um, Something changed with this ONR. Some I feel like something changed. It's like it, it appears to be a little more goopy, a little bit, just a little bit, but it's noticeable enough for me. It's like darker, you know. It's like much bluer. It doesn't have this like milky appearance anymore. It has like more of a. Um, but you can kind of see it in my hand a little bit too. It just got on my hand a little bit, but the smell. Let me, let me see. Okay, there you go. The smell is definitely still there. Okay. Caught a bit of it, but yeah. It just seems like the um, liquid of itself has changed. And maybe um, these proportioners, I'm starting to think, might not be the way to go if um, you're, you are not using these often. Oh, the, uh, the dryer stopped. But yeah, might not be the way to go. So I'll have to reconsider using these in the future. But they're really nice to, sh to use though, is my issue. Right. I wonder if this DIY detail um, liquid or whatever, rinseless wash liquid in version one will change. Hopefully not, but yeah. It also means it could be a possibility for this guy too. Because I know ONR is kind of changing in a way. And that's not good, <laughs> if that's the case. 
Yeah, and it's been almost a year too, because I bought this back in October, I would want to say, uh, yeah, October 2023, because that was when my sort of um, uh, revival or something, my resurgence in interest um, came back, so to say. We'll see. I actually still have, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's this gallon bottle of touchless shampoo. I forget, I keep forgetting that I have it, but um, I need to use it because uh, there are times where it does call for that situation, but I just like forget it. Carpet bomber right there, which I have not used at all, which I do. So that my, that's like my only regret, um, along with, uh, I believe this is the stopper right here, the finisher, right, for PNS uh, carpet bomb, whatever system. I have the two out of the three steps, essentially. Um, I still, <laughs> uh, I have these like little bottles. These are like 32 ounce little jugs, which do come kind of come in handy at times uh, for some some purposes. But uh, yeah, I got <laughs> I probably should uh, use this one up so it won't uh, take up any more room or whatever. But we'll uh, kind of see about that. But yeah, the next time I do use some sort of shampoo, though, it will be Incredible Suds, which I still have right here for some reason. But speaking of which, let me point to you guys here. These two IK foam sprayers, the 12s or whatever you call them. These um, have made some of a comeback um, whichever has the shampoo in it, I think it's this one, but yeah, I've made a comeback because, um, I, I am now starting to incorporate the sort of the hybrid wash system to my sort of, uh, repertoire when it comes to washing. So much, so much because the, mostly the reason why is because I have so much of, um, gallon bottles of shampoo including this and then of course the cherry foam right that was from my video um ooh, the sticker is like starting to like fall off that is actually weird huh i wonder why it's doing like that huh interesting anyhow so I have cherry foam and uh, hyper wash from that one video. I do plan to uh, keep using the hyper system so that way I have the excuse of using up my shampoo bottles so they don't take up so much room. And not to mention I have incredible so it's not this exact one. This is already diluted uh, 1 to 32 essentially. Um, uh, somewhere I have a bottle of incredible, so it's like somewhere on the bottom or whatever. And not to mention now, I have, uh, well nowadays I also have Carpro Reset, which is actually my favorite for right now, if I'm going to be honest, because it, um, very, uh, very slick, it mixes very well, it's very easy, and it cleans really well. I would say this Incredible Suds is my second favorite. Um, it falls a little short only because it's a little hard to work with because it's so thick. But you just have to think a little more with incredible suds and then you have a very effective soap in your hands. Not literally, but you know. <laughs> uh, anywho. Um, the hybrid wash system has been uh, really good for me. I will continue to do it. Because, solely because, yes, um, I have so much shampoo, so it, that kind of works. So, for those who don't know, hyper washing basically means you incorporate both the, of the of uh, the cleaners. So you have uh, so you have both shampoos and rinse wash in your arsenal, right? You use the the sort of the the foaming, right? The foaming shampoo as your pre wash, whichever it is, incredible suds, cherry foam, or hyper wash. Anything you want, basically. And then use that as a pre-wash, rinse it off after a few minutes, and then you incorporate the 
rinse this wash right after you um, rinse it off, right? To help um, provide that lu lubrication, but also just to really finish it off, right? Finish off anything you got left on your car. <sighs> um, that is essentially how that works. And it's been working great. At least I think anyway. Not to mention, again, I am uh, using up my shampoo, you know, so a little, a little less uh, crammed up, I guess you could say, um, every time I wash, right, in a way. But I am making it a little harder for myself because now I have this. This is Built Hamber's Touchless uh, Pre-Wash. Um, this is a, supposed to be a sugar-based snow foam pre-wash. It's supposed to be really good for um, for a pre-wash snow foam for your car. Uh, this is supposed to be version two, and I got this from uh, Obsessed Garage. It just arrived like not lo uh, super long ago. It came like I don't know, now it's like several weeks ago or something. But I remember there was some trouble uh, with the shipment of the first batch from Obsessed Garage. And I, had, I was definitely one of them, so whatever, eventually came and now it's sitting here on my cart. Pretty cool. I've been using this as a means to, um, uh, what do you call it? top off my ceramic coating. This is from DIY. Um, many of you know by, by this point, it is quick beads. Really cool for having a ceramic coating, but also using it for your wheels. It's actually really sick because um, you don't really have to like hand apply to your wheels and stuff like that, which have like very, you know, depending on what car you have, it can have like intricate shapes and crevices and all that stuff. And then, but when it comes to this, which is a rinse off sealant of sorts, you spray it on and you just rinse it off, right? And then from there on, you can just use your towel or blow it off with your um, blow dryer of, of any sort you have. It could be something like this, right this little tiny guy right here this works or you can just use your leaf leaf blower right which uh, actually works pretty well even if you don't exactly have a ceramic coating on your wheels it actually pre works pretty well just your you know leaf blower uh so i've been doing that uh i i, I will try to consistently do that every two months for my ceramic coating just to keep it top top uh top notch but eventually you'll have to uh you know, do a little more just to keep it clean or whatever. Uh, unclog those pores because ceramic coatings uh, are porous, which sounds strange, I know, but that's just kind of how it works with uh, ceramic coating and stuff like that. Even your clear coat of itself is not exactly smooth. You know, your hand feels like it makes it feel like, or not makes it, but for uh, clear coats. But clear coats actually are rough when you look at through it, a uh, mic uh, microscope. You'll see like individual little little craters and stuff, and that's where you know water spotting can happen. All the crap can get in there, and uh, that's why you really, you kind of want a decent shampoo to uh, get all that out. You know, shampoo or rinse and wash to get that all that out. But eventually, you'll also want to uh, do some sort of like water spot removal or a higher pH wash of some sort here and there, especially if you want to ceramic coat your car. Really make it clean so that the ceramic, SiO2, all that stuff can adhere to your paint a lot better that way. Speaking of, I guess, uh, ceramic, I also have this. This is uh, Gian, uh, Gian Wet Coat. Very, very good. Um, one of the best of the rinse off sealants. So I essentially have like the competitors right here, Quick Beads and Gion Wet Coat. You can't go wrong with either one. Um, I haven't really like have noticeable differences between the two. They both perform great. Um, I use Quick Beads for my paint and then I like using Gion Wet Coat for my wheels for some reason, I don't know. You, you can go either way. There's no, there's no real answer for, to them. Um, I'm starting to, I'm starting to uh, notice um, I have 
a low amount of gloves. <laughs> We're getting to that point really now. So I have to uh, buy another pack of 100, really. Um, when it comes to what's on the car, um, I had been using this, which is the Orbit. No, actually, um, it's the Eden spray nozzle for the garden hose. Quick connect right here, steel, stainless steel. I do like it. Um, I, most of the time I do use the shower setting. That's just my little preference anyway. Sometimes the soaker, as you kind of saw, but most of the time I use the shower uh, setting. Um, on the car, I do have the gauntlet towel right here, the drying towel. Um, you can kind of see with the gray, uh, the lighter gray side and then this side, right? Uh, I use that sometimes because there are times where I just feel like using two or two towels in my hand to dry off my car versus one big towel. You know, it's just like a preference thing, depending on what mood I'm in and stuff like that. Uh, that's like the only thing that's new here. And that's about it. When it comes to this, uh, I still use the clay towel from PNS. Uh, very good for uh, maintenance claying. I have this bottle right here, which is the, um, I'm starting to use this. I, I used to have carpet bomber in here, but I just washed it out. I put it back into the gallon bottle and um, washed it out. And now I put the nano wheel cleaner in here, nano skin wheel cleaner in here. Uh, very handy in that situation. Uh, nothing else, I don't think, super new around there. I still have my old stuff, ish. <laughs> my incredible suds is still like way behind over there somewhere, right here. Beautiful, right? It is definitely incredible. It definitely is up to the name. I actually still have this, and I haven't even touched it because I've have, I have not found any warrant for it to use um, DI water. I, because I've been using um, uh, distilled water, which is in here, for my uh, rinse and wash portion of things. My DIY keg, definitely use it still. The only thing drastically different is my spring setup, right? I like this setup right now, honestly. Um, I know it's metal. That's the only thing about it, which makes me worry a little bit because, you know, when you drop it carelessly, you can uh, possibly hit your car with it, and that could definitely damage your car if you're not super careful with that. That's why a lot of people like to use those plastic sprayers, so that way, you know, something if something were to happen, it won't wreck your car as bad. But I really do like this setup, though, because, um, well, one, it uses cheaper parts, right? Two, this tip right here is the key. This tip looks very unconventional, right? Um, sprays a very fine mist, uh, which I'll show in the B-roll right here, which I actually recorded recently. But it actually shoots a pretty fine mist. It goes far enough for your car, and it covers the car well with all the rinseless, right? So I've been using this uh, spray configuration as a means to get rinseless on my car with my DIY keg right here. Very much still use it, and I love it. Um, but I don't, I, I have not used this alone um, in a bit because the hyperwash. So I use the IK foam sprayer and I use this. But there are times where I use both of these, right? Because one of them has the foaming shampoo, the other has the rinseless wash. And I like it because it foams, right? Um, it makes the DIY detail rinseless wash foam. Uh, I just charge up the, the tire pump for it. Uh, I actually use a little portable tire pump to keep up the pressure for these sprayers. It's actually really handy. Nice little hack, right? The only thing, of course, is, you know, you got to kind of deal with the shortcomings of putting the valve back on and stuff like that, especially with one hand, but... 
should be secured enough. But yeah. Uh, I like this sort of configuration with the bag and everything. It's a, it's a little, maybe it's a little much to somebody, but um, I like having these like straps right here to hold up the uh, the bag. And um, I, I really like how it functions, right? You can kind of just turn it on like this. Oops, you gotta probably hold it like this, yep. You just hit the button, it'll pump up and then the uh, safety valve will eventually go off, right? Which is uh, very cool. Doesn't keep it, you know, over pressurized or anything like that. So it's pretty nice. Uh, and then, um, you know, with the hybrid system, right? You're not overusing one product or the other, right? Over the other, you know. Um, it's actually pretty efficient with these two, really because you're not using as much product to get on the car, but it foams quite well and um, it cleans as, just as effectively. So in a way, um, I've done away with my pressure washer for a little bit, but I like using the pressure washer sometimes if I have like bird poo on there like a lot or something, um, but I have not used it in a hot minute because honestly, <laughs> Um, the garden hose is just enough, plus the cleaning capabilities that these two boast um, is very much enough. But the pressure washer does come into play sometimes. You know, it does call for it sometimes. But, you know, we'll bust it out someday <laughs> um, for at least somebody's car. I definitely don't like using the pressure washer for certain cars, um, especially, especially coupes, because a lot of coupes lack the, um, the what do you call it, the door sill or whatever you call it. Instead, it's just glass, right? And then you have the rubber sort of seal behind the glass and that is supposed to be a means to keep the door sealed or de keep the car sealed, right? The interior sealed. But it's not 100%, right? Like this. That's why um, I, I, I even noticed um, when I first used the um, my pressure washer on um, when I, um, on a BMW that I washed, uh, recently. I used a pressure washer the very first time and I noticed there was some water um, fogging up or yeah kind of like fogging up a little bit on and, and from the inside so I was like oh shoot I didn't think about that. Um, so yeah kind of kind of have to think about when to use the pressure washer right for each car. Can't just go willy-nilly on uh, every car because you know, what if, what if that convertible top on a convertible car doesn't like pressure washers, right? But uh, if, your pressure, if, if the pressure washer is your only means of rinsing, it's like, hmm, what do you do with that, right? In that situation. Now, you know, you're more likely to have a garden hose than a pressure washer, sure, but what if there is a situation where that is your only option? So what do you do with that? You could, theoretically, stand back further to reduce the pressure, but I don't know. Um, we'll cross that bridge, I guess. <laughs> when we, only when we have to, but yeah. Anyways, um, you may also notice, right, the, um, the water softener tank is on the floor right yeah i figured um i'll only like hang it up when i'm like moving a car transferring it from here to like my driveway but um there was an incident where i um had an, an additional hose attached to it right and I was dragging, um, I attached it to here, right? Because that's where the soft water comes out. And I was trying to use the soft water to rinse off my car. But the hose I had at the time was too short. 
So what happened was I yanked it just enough while this was still in the cart. And because it's top heavy, right? It makes it top heavy on this side. Ph physics take over and this whole thing fell over. And so all my stuff, pretty much most of my stuff, if not, fell over <laughs> and it was a fun time putting it back up, right? So it was quite the mess. Luckily nothing broke. Like none of these bottles or um, anything you see on the car broke, luckily. Maybe there was some spillage from, I think it was like one of these bottles or something with the um, proportioner right here. But other than that, nothing. Like no major instance, um, just a lesson learned. So I will for now on have it like this whenever it's resting. So also like the plastic, um, don't want to mess with it, especially when it's during summer. Um, it does soften up the plastic a little bit or enough to where um, if I put something like this on here, it'll definitely flex it and um, definitely don't want to take any risks or anything like that. So what's happening here is uh, is actually now like the backing plate is actually now just resting on this part of um, one of the trays right here, right? So now um, basically it won't tilt over at least as, as easily. And it's just resting on the floor. The bottom part is just resting on the floor. So um, I've actually tested uh, not too long ago too with the, um, what do you call the water softener test uh, strips. And according to the strip, it's still good. Like the so the what do you call the cartridge is still good. Um, it's still putting out soft water. It's not um, losing any capabilities or anything like that, at least yet. So it's actually pre performing pretty well. I forget when exactly I got this. Um, so I have to check on, on that. I'll probably put it in the bottom part of the screen right now, hopefully in post, but anyway. Uh, with just my amount of use, because I only wash my car twice a week, or no, um, bi-weekly, so therefore every other week, sometimes even three nowadays, but every three weeks, depending on what I'm doing, right? And, uh, um, you know, it uh, has been performing pretty well. I think this size really is um, pretty efficient. So if you are going to get some sort of uh, water softening or water DI system, these um, size, these sizes are probably efficient. This size burns out too fast, depending, especially depending on what kind of water you have. But for me, it definitely burns out pretty fast. I noticed. I never actually had it burn out completely, but um, you know, having to use it once and look at it, yeah, it just feels like it burns out pretty fast, especially in California, right, where our water is particularly hard, you know. And uh, yeah, so um, that does uh, play into kind of why I haven't used it because this is just good enough, honestly. Plus the rinse and wash um, really helps out with the water spots too. So that's why I really like uh, Vintage washing. It just really helps out with that as well. Speaking of water spots, in a way, I've been uh, still using the water distiller. Uh, still great. Um, still use it to produce said distilled water. Um, I just refilled up this tank right here and I use this tank to um, fill up either of these sprays. Uh, the rinse is portion anyway. The foam, the foam um, uh, portion or foaming shampoo, I just use tap water because I'm gonna rinse it off anyway. So it's like, what's the point? That's a waste. Whereas this usually is like the last thing, right? Rinse and wash is the last thing will, that will be on my car. That's why, yeah, I mean, um, just to be safe, I just use distilled water so that the rinse and wash doesn't have to fight my um, tap water just to get to my 
get to the dirt or whatever is remaining on um, the car, right? Does that make sense? So, yeah. Um, you may notice also that on the nozzle right here, I have some silicone tubing right here of sorts. I use this to drive it down to um, either sprayer and fill up the distilled water that way. Um, every time I do that, I use all of it, right? So this is a three gallon tank. I fill up the sprayer with three gallons of water. Well, two for this, right? I think this is a two and a half gallon tank for both of these. That one is a five gallon, so I can fill that up with three gallons of water easily. So this is uh, very handy. This is basically my reserve right here. This also has distilled water. This is absolutely like, whenever I really need it, I'm gonna go to this, right? If I need more. This is just to catch the distilled water from here. Um, it, it came with it, right? I did my review on it um, a while back and it's still performing well, by the way. So um, you really have to, all you do is like pay attention to the inside of the water distiller um, and then you clean it out with uh, citric acid powder, right? Uh, you just basically what you do is get um, some scoops of citric acid powder, throw it in there with some water. And then you actually um, turn on the unit, right? Without turning on the fan. So you just unplug this because all, all this one is, is just a fan, right? The fan to um, essentially help the cooling of the water distiller, right? The other plug is the main source, basically. That's where the water distilling happens. This is going to um, boil the water and force the water evaporation through here, right? The fan, um, when it's on, will cool this part, right? And then what happens with water vapor when you cool it, right? It turns back into liquid. So all that trapped liquid will eventually travel through the tube right here, and then this will catch now, now the distilled water, right? Because water vapor does not carry the lime scale, the minerals, all that nasty stuff, right? That's the whole point of water distilling. And then it goes all into here, right? This is all distilled water right here uh, remaining, right? Um, I'll also use it for like mixing chemicals. So if I, if I want to like make myself a all-purpose cleaning spraying uh, solution, I use distilled water just to really make sure I have a clean um, product, right? That's uh, also another purpose for that. But um, that's really how I've been uh, being able to avoid the water spotting is one, uh, rinse and wash, two, uh, distilled water. Combine the two, and they definitely have uh, pretty much no water spotting, right? The only water spotting that could happen maybe is in between like the seams or whatever, or not seams, but like these lines, right? But that's like, that's like if you don't even, if you don't, um, uh, rinse off your car, right? You know, it's kind of hard to like not do that because um, the rinse is washing uh, also can get into the crevices and that'll like take care of it pretty, pretty much. That's, at least from my experience anyway. I haven't had really like nasty water spots. Like if you like open up the trunk and then you look in between those spaces, it doesn't really happen. Um, let me see if there's anything else to talk about, really. Um, I've been trying to experiment um, throughout my detail cake experience with like different mods. So um, I've been using like these like garden spray or garden hose nozzles, right? To like have different tips, you know? Cause these actually have like the front garden hose uh, thread and so I can have like a quick connect right here 
and then have like whatever I have. This one was one of my most recent ones. This is supposed to be something you use for um, like baseball fields and stuff like that. This nozzle um, uh, would work if the detail kegs put out more product per minute. Otherwise, it just kind of came out like a little, like it's like big fat drops of product onto your car, which is like kind of pointless, right? You want a mist, not these fat droplets. <laughs> um, it would be better if it's a um, if you're just rinsing off your car, right? But um, I'm already using the um, the multi spray nozzle. So there's really no purpose for this. So unfortunately, um, I mean, and I'm also too lazy to return it anyway, so uh, I don't have like the original packaging or anything. So I kind of bit the bullet there. But I mean, hey, if this is the only thing lying around at the time, I will definitely use it. I'll probably take this off and uh, repurpose it just for the garden hose. That's really um, all, I, all I can do really with this. <laughs> at this point. Hey, but hey, it was worth the attempt. This, I did not use this for too long because it, it failed <laughs> um, for detail keg sprays. But when it comes to garden coat spraying, then that's where it starts to shine, right? And you can definitely use this for like your plants, your yard. I guess if you have a baseball field, you know, if you're rich like that, but this is what it's actually primarily used for, is to um, add moisture to baseball uh, fields and such like that. Especially on the dirt side of things. So pretty cool um, in those applications, but for detail keg applications, not so much, unfortunately. Um, anything else I got? Yes, so... Yeah. <laughs> the thing about these, um, this is a pre, uh, preludio. This is a acidic rinses wash. Uh, you use this for pre-soak. You can also pre use this for like uh, contact washing and stuff in a way. But um, this also is the alkaline version. It's, also, it's supposed to be a uh, a two-step or two pH system, I believe, right? From Labo Cosmetica. And then funny enough, I have the Rinse's Wash, HydroSafe still sitting back over there. I have not used it since. Um, it's, it's pretty good for what it is, but uh, the purpose is very niche for me. So I have not been able to use that um, as quite often because, well, I am a maniac like that. <laughs> uh, these will be around for um, whenever I need that that wash, right, to unclog the pores of main, uh, ceramic coated cars, like mine, for example, right, and now my sister's car, because I ceramic coated both of those cars, actually. Um, but yeah, an acidic rinses wash is something I kind of like wanted because I don't know. Um, I think it's something nice to have, you know? And um, also something I could use, you know, in the sprayer and stuff like that. So um, I plan to use this sprayer for the aesthetic wash. And uh, you can kind of see already, it kind of works because you can let, th these letters are supposed to be gold, but um, the gold color wore off because of the acid. And uh, I think some of the acid got onto um, my, one of my like pouches I use to like, it, 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 um, it's basically like, a, you know, one of those like arm bands you use for your smartphone when you're like exercising. Some of this like dropped, uh, like the product, like it had a little, it had like a little dribble come out and touch the, uh, the arm band. And then the, the plastic part, the clear window essentially dissolved because of that. <laughs> it had like a little hole in it, so I had to like throw it away. I was like, oh man. So I think if you're gonna store these, you if you're gonna store this and um, store these acidic products, you definitely want some sort of like Ziploc bag for it. 
because it will definitely or some sort of like chemical resistant container because otherwise it's actually it's, it's it, it doesn't it doesn't play around it does not play around so you definitely want some sort of a container to uh, safely store these uh, chemicals <laughs> so some lessons learned there um, but yeah, we'll definitely uh, have these come uh, into use someday. Uh, or, yeah, whatever. Words. Hard. Sometimes. Anyway, so... I think I have a couple more things to show. Um, I'm kind of forgetting. Oh yeah, there's some of the, the nozzles I've picked up in the past. For the um, detail keg. Uh, it's, it's, it essentially is that same misting spray nozzle, but it's angled, so it's a little hard to, harder to use. Which is why um, I bought one of those like angled uh, garden hose connectors to angle it back straight to compensate it. But um, now that uh, I actually found the straight version, right? which is this, which is right here. So uh, that kind of uh, killed the need for that, <laughs> pretty much. There we go. Um, so <sighs> that's, I think that's it for the major stuff. Um, really? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only two major ones I have not mentioned at this point is this, right? This is uh, my my bottle of um, ceramic coating still. I think it's still liquid inside. It's not solid or anything. Um, this is the DOI Details 8-year coating. Yeah, you see the 8 right here. Ceramic coating. That's been performing pretty well in my car still. It's been about more or less 3 months. So we'll definitely see once it reaches that full year. If you see if it holds up on my car or not. Hopefully it does. We'll see. Um, uh, where was the other one? Um, ah. This um, is Cerakote's ceramic coating. So this one has a interesting backstory behind it. So the first version was a fail because of the curing mechanism was bad or something like that. Uh, so Cerakote went, went back and corrected that via version 2. So I bought version 2 because um, uh, people like Pan, the organizer, used it and uh, apparently it worked. So went ahead and bought it. And uh, that essentially um, gave me the uh, a sort of opportunity to start code my sister's car as an excuse to test out um, the ceramic coating. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, um, the ceramic, the ceramic coating appears to be performing pretty well. It's been about a month since I've applied it. Um, I have, I still have like a little bit left on the first bottle and then the second bottle is still in here too. And, uh, the funny thing about that also is that I accidentally bought another one of these um, uh, ceramic coatings because I tried to save some money by having it on the subscribe and save mode for Amazon and I bought the first time I canceled that order for some reason I forgot the reason why but I did it and then the second time I bought it that one um, was complete the order right and I was able to cancel that subscribe and save for that one but the first one I learned my lesson because apparently even if you cancel the first order, the subscribe and save mode doesn't uh, actually deactivate. So you have to be careful with that. So every time you order something and cancel it and you do the subscribe and save, double check on that because you definitely don't want a duplicate item to come in a month later or whatever. Uh, so that happened to me. So that means um, I can't, uh, and I can't return it either because it's a ceramic coating chemicals, right? Um, it is not, um, what do you call, eligible for a return. So I'm stuck with uh, essentially two sets of these bottles for 
Sorry, I'm calling. I mean, uh, I don't have to worry about running out <laughs> for a while, but I can probably give it to my one of my friends that like car, um, detailing, but um, I definitely can't do a giveaway either because, you know, you're not really supposed to ship these out, you know. Um, I don't know. I may do something with it someday um, with my second set, but for right now, it's just kind of sitting somewhere around in my garage. It's gonna be around somewhere, but anyway, you get the story. You get the gist of things. I might've put it something on the bottom, maybe. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, so you can kind of see that it comes with the, um, the the microfiber applicator right here, which I'm not a fan of. I just rather, I actually rather use the foam applicator that DIY details came with. And I'm actually a fan of the, the circular method. That's just me anyway. Yeah, that's it. Uh, really, for the major stuff anyway. Um, I'm trying to like see if I don't, or if I'm not forgetting anything else I should mention. Um, yeah, that's it, you know. Um, yeah, going forward, hybrid washing, that's been my go-to method for right now. Uh, I'll try to keep up with the ceramic coating updates, right? Uh, I do want to try to see if I can wash my sister's, sister's car just to like test out the ceramic coating. Um, not, uh, maybe, maybe sometime soonish, we'll see. Cause I kind of want to uh, take care of other things, you know, such like th other such things, but we'll get there. We want to cross that bridge. We'll figure it out. But anyways, uh, with that, thank you very much for tuning in for this uh, lovely, long car detailing journal. Um, for those who care about that stuff anyway. But I do really appreciate it anyway, uh, for those who stick around to listen to me ramble on about uh, everything that is car detailing. If you have any comments, if you, if you want to share your sort of journal like thoughts, if you want to like spill your ramblings into my comment section you are very much welcome to i'll definitely i'll try to take a look at them just to see like you know hey i mean i, I like seeing different perspectives and stuff like that um to like see what works what doesn't maybe if i uh maybe i could perhaps incorporate that to my system i don't know you know um such like that you know uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, right? Including the car detailing stuff. Oh, uh, oh yeah, so someone, sorry, so someone came through the garage. So anyway, so um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so basically, uh, I know it's been weird to see, what was it? Uh, one of the, like, seeing those videos on the gaming channel like this, it's, you know, um, it could do something to my channel. I don't know. Um, but it's not like my channel has been like, crazy or anything like that so i can kind of do whatever i want essentially <laughs> at this point and uh, that's why i've been like doing more by just other hobbies on this channel so i don't know we'll figure out like what we should do with those car detailing videos um whenever the time comes um i don't know if i should like make a different channel or a separate channel for this stuff because I already have like a good amount of videos that are on that on this channel that are performing pretty well. So I don't know, like, what should I do with that, right? Like, should I just like re-upload to the new channel and then, I don't know, get those views back somehow? I don't know <laughs> uh, if it works like that. No, it doesn't. But um, I don't know, I don't know. I probably should have if I were to do car detailing stuff in the first place, but I've already, you know, I've already opened that box and I don't know how hard it's going to put it back in and open it somewhere else, right? <laughs> but like I said, we'll figure it out. So um, anyways, enough rambling. Thank you very much and hope to see you all in next video. Sean out.